السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك لا أحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ونبيك محمد وعلى أزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وذريته وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين كما صليت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبعد فيا عبار الله أوصيكم ونفسي المذنبة المخطئة بتقوى الله وأحثكم على طاعته يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد. All praise be to Allah, our Creator, Sustainer, and Cherisher. We bear witness there is no deity worthy of worship save Allah. 
and we bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and lost messenger. We ask Allah to bestow his blessings, peace, and mercy upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, his household, his companions, and all of his followers till the end of time. My dear respected brothers and sisters, fear Allah and be God conscious. Allah has warned you in the Quran by saying, O people, fear Allah, be prepared for a day when no one would be concerned with another, another person. And you will be seeing people as if they're intoxicated and they're not. When every woman would let go of her own conceived children, and indeed it is the wrath of Allah, it is the tournament of Allah that is severe. My beloved Muslims, my dear respected brothers and sisters, in the previous khutbas, we discussed the deeds that are most relevant and most important to you as a Muslim in order to achieve the highest ranks in paradise. And we started by addressing the love to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as the most important one because as we repeated the hadith over and over, and we should never be tired of repeating it again because that's our path to the Jannah, to the highest ranks of the Prophet, that يُحْشَرُ الْمَرْءُ مَعَ مَنْ أَحَبْ A person would be gathered with those whom he loved. So that's our slogan that we need to keep in mind, and that's the most important deed we need to focus on in order to acquire and raise our children on acquiring so they become companions of the Prophet ﷺ, in the Day of Judgment and be at the same level in Paradise by the grace of Allah. And then we moved on to a different class of deeds that the Prophet ﷺ has taught us as important because they are not limited to this world. Many deeds, when you stop doing or when you die, you stop acquiring benefits or rewards, such as your fasting, your prayers. But the Prophet ﷺ has pointed seven different deeds that even after you, you die, their reward would continue, and it's everlasting, so long those, the impact of those deeds last. And we started by spreading the, the knowledge and then securing the water supplies by either flowing a river or digging wells. And then we move to the importance of planting the trees. And the Prophet والسلام, as in the hadith that we would repeat for the benefit again, he said, سَبْعٌ يَجْرِي أَجْرُهُنَّ عَلَى الْعَبْدِ فِي قَبْرِهِ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهِ يُعَلِّمُ عِلْمًا أو يُجْرِي نَهْرًا أو يَحْفِرُ بِئْرًا أو يَغْرِسُ نَخْلًا أو يورث مصحفا أو يبني مسجدا أو يترك ولدا يستغفر له. So the first one, as we mentioned again, is to spread the knowledge because that is the benefit you get from teaching the good to other people, and then securing the most important element for life that is water. We mentioned before that if you look. At the common denominator of these deeds, you find that the Prophet ﷺ taught us what would leave an impact on the community, on humanity. A deed that is not limited in benefit and impact on yourself as an individual, but it would go beyond to involve the community around you, the environment, and the entire humanity. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ specified these acts. When a lot of people think about any project in life, they have a good idea, they have a project, and what's the ultimate result? and the standard of success for this project is how we monetize and what's the dollar value associated with, right? The Prophet ﷺ, with the divine guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
had a paradigm shift on how you think, on how you plan things in life, and made your purpose in life bigger than your limited life. It is the ultimate eternity, the glory in paradise, living in the mercy and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the companionship of his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as such, he chose the deeds that would be most rewarding are those of impact. And when you think about any project, when you think about doing any work or deed, it's not about the money value, it's not about the dollar sign, and it's not how it impacts you as an individual, it is about how big of an impact you're going to leave in the society for humanity. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ emphasized by emphasizing the concept of leaving a legacy. Leaving a legacy behind you, making a change in the course of humanity. Many companies in their mission, take an example, the great company of Apple. They made it their mission as to do one thing. They wanted to make a dent in the universe. This is a very powerful, intense statement. Very ambitious to make a dent in the universe. This slogan, my brothers and sisters, this tagline, is what a Muslim should have. To make a dent in the universe, to leave a legacy that would last till the end of time, so you can come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're proud. When Khalid bin al-Walid comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has defeated the Persians and the Romans and conquered the Muslim words of Syria, and when Umar bin al-Khattab spread his justice that he became an international figure that people are going to talk about till the end of time, and when Abdul Rahman bin Auf gave up his wealth in order to save the people of Medina, what are you going to come to Allah with? When people made it a purpose for their lives to make a dent in the universe, what is the dent you're going to cause? And what is the impact your life is going to be associated with? For it is very important, my brothers and sisters, to understand that your life is valued by not how many years you live, not by how much wealth you accumulate, because all that is going to be perished and vanish. But the Prophet ﷺ is telling you what is going to last is that impact and that legacy that Allah will preserve for you till the day of judgment. For that matter, it is very important to make sure you get a share of every single deed the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ has told you, planting a palm tree. We talked in the previous khutbah how important that is in undoing the damage every human is causing to this universe by contributing to global warming, by contributing to drought, by contributing to natural disasters. It's our own doing. <laughs> the corruption, the damage has prevailed on land and ocean by people's own doing, what, they've, what their own hands have acquired. This is what we're doing. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ has selected the palm tree, because it lasts long, and it has massive impact on the weather, on the climate, 
and at the bigger picture, at the global warming. You can go to carbonify.org and calculate your carbon footprint, my brothers and sisters, and they will tell you how many trees you have to plant to undo the damage you're doing. That's the least every Muslim should do. You go to Houston City Online, and you'll find, as we mentioned before, trees for Houston. They plant trees on behalf of people. Have them plant trees on your behalf. Not only your backyard, not only your front yard. Make it a project that you can come proud to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, where you've left an impact. Where, when you die, you left the earth as a better place, not as a worse place. Because of your consumption, because of your damage that you've inflicted on the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And as I, as much as I hate to interrupt the khutbah and make uh, comments about the manners of uh, the khutbah, but it is very imperative to preserve the manners of the khutbah because it's ibadah, my brothers and sisters. So no phones and no chewing gums. During the khutbah, so uh, that—that's. Well, I hate to do this, but uh, I'm so concerned about your ibada and about you being rewarded for the ibada since you're doing the effort. It's not worth it losing this massive reward for a minor thing. So, please give the khutbah the utmost respect with the highest manners and etiquettes, because Allah is looking at you. And the Prophet ﷺ will witness this in the Day of Judgment. We move on to the other deed that the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned. قال ويورث مصحفا. Whoever leaves behind him a mushaf, you go to every masjid in every mosque, and you grab a, a mushaf, and on the first page you find وقف لله تعالى, endowment for Allah سبحانه وتعالى. This is where it came from. Your predecessors, your grandparents, knew this hadith. Everyone made sure that before they die, they leave a masjid, they leave a mushaf in the masjid, and they write it in their wasiya if they die to make sure they spread the mushaf. Alhamdulillah, this is a massive rewarding deed, as it's obvious from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And the one, as we mentioned before, who really wants to do the best for himself, who would not only work smart but worship smart. And now we're in the digital era. Wallahi, I envy those who design an app to make it easy for people to read the Quran. That is included in this hadith. Yours, your intelligence, your creativity, for making the ibada easy for people. Everyone can buy a mushaf and put it in the masjid. Make a mushaf that is easy for the children to read. Create an app for that. You will come to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as the person who revolutionized the children' education by creating a digital medium that would make it appealing to children, to people with disabilities. Now we have the Braille mushaf. Wallahi, I envy that person. What a massive reward! What an enormous reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala! This person is gonna get. It is not just buying a mushaf and putting it in the masjid, and probably someone is gonna read it and someone may not, and it might stay there for years and no one is gonna grab it off the shelf among this massive collection of masahif, right? So think smart and use your intelligence. Use your creativity, use your innovative mind to bring people to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, to make the Quran more accessible to them. Now we have the spear digital, mashallah, reminds you to say Subhanallah every hour. This is unbelievably smart and brilliant. Making the mushaf, this is where they need my brothers and sisters, especially for the children. For people who don't speak Arabic, 
Focus on these areas. You want to make sure when you want to invest, you invest where there is a need and there is not much supply. That would be a huge demand. Same thing applies to ibadah, subhanallah. It's an area where there is massive need for people who don't understand Arabic, for children, for people in non-Muslim countries where there is lack of education and not abundance of Muslim teachers. Think about it that way. And don't think about the dollar value. Think about the mercy of Allah's value, the reward value that you're going to be lying in your grave and people making dua for you, and every single letter and word of that Quran recited or memorized, you're counting the reward. And you come in the day of judgment, not as a person who conquered a land, but as a person who conquered knowledge and conquered the hearts of people and opened it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I'm hoping everyone remember this ayah. Allah in the Quran in Surah Al-Qasas said, وَابْتَغِ فِيمَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَسِبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا One simple portion of an ayah. وَابْتَغِ فِيمَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ Seek in whichever Allah has given you the hereafter. Remember this, my brothers. Anything that Allah has granted you and blessed you with, make it a vehicle for you to the akhirah. Make it a path for you to gain the blessings of Allah. And make it a gateway, a gateway for you to enter the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your intelligence, your wealth, your talents, Everything that Allah has granted you, think about it. How can I make an impact? How can I make my dent? How can I come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not be embarrassed of myself when Khalid and Umar and Abu Bakr and Ali and Muawiyah and the rest of the great predecessors of Islam come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Come with something you're proud of in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And use your intelligence to revolutionize how we conduct our da'wah. Not just by leaving a hard copy mushaf, mushaf on the shelf, by bringing it to every corner of people's houses. To their iPads, to their smartphones, to their earbuds. You could be part of it and Allah will have an enormous reward for you. Following that, the Prophet والسلام, talked about building a masjid, and this is very well known to every Muslim how important that is. For the Prophet والسلام, has mentioned in the famous hadith, whoever builds a masjid to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as little as, as small as the nest of a bird, then Allah will replace that for him, build him a house in the Jannah. So make sure that you have a share in building a masjid. Make sure that you spread the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remote areas in this planet. There are areas, my brothers and sisters, to our current present time in 2018 in Muslim countries that didn't have masjids. Don't go far. India and Pakistan, which own nuclear weapons, but don't have adequate water resources and don't have adequate masjids. For Indians and Pakistanis, this is your responsibility. And I hate to name it, but that's the truth of the matter. That's your responsibility. Make a project where you will bring knowledge to every corner, to every city, to every town, to every village. For $10,000, you can build a masjid in a small town in Pakistan. Do that. Because Allah is going to ask you for that luxury car you're driving. It could have built 10 masjids in 10 different knowledge, in 10 different villages in these areas. Same thing applies to Africa, to Arab countries, and so many places on earth. It is a very common sense project. It's a very 
familiar concept to Muslims, but yet, as the Prophet والسلام, has mentioned, الخير قليل, الخير كثير, وقليل فاعله. Good deeds are abundant, massive, but only few implement and translate that into practice. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who listen to the advice and follow the best of it. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ففوز المستغفرين استغفر الله. الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ونبيك محمد كما تحب ان يصلى عليه وبعد My dear respected brothers and sisters, and the seventh and last deed in this hadith that the Prophet ﷺ has lighted, that to leave behind, قَالَ وَلَدًا يَدْعُوا أَوْ يَسْتَغْفِرُوا لَهُ To leave behind you a child that makes dua and asks Allah for forgiveness for you. And this hadith could be understood in many different ways. The first one, obviously, is to have children and raise them in a good way, so one day they will remember you and make dua. But more importantly, the obligation that you make dua for your own parents. As a matter of fact, scholars took this to an extreme, and they made it part of piety is to make dua for your parents with every salah, and hoping that your children will do the same thing for you. Teach them that now. Don't wait till you're about to die. Before you leave your house every single day, ask your children and wife to make dua for you. It becomes a habit. It becomes a bonding experience. When a child feels like, my parents are asking me for dua. Number one, especially the child, his dua is accepted. And number two, you're the one who's winning. Make it a habit. It's a very small thing, but it goes way too long. It has a massive impact on the psyche of the child and in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where it results in certain and huge and massive reward. The second part of this hadith that scholars actually did not limit the meaning of the child waladan, to your own children because this hadith is nakira, it's undefined. And the scholar said that any child you teach and make dua for you after you die. So you could be a scholar that teach people the knowledge and they'll make, make dua for you. And that's it. your children of knowledge, basically. Children of Iman and not children of Abdan. And this is the other obligation for us, my dear respected brothers and sisters, to make dua for our scholars, for our predecessors, for the companions that is only for their blood, sweat, and tears we became Muslims. Keep them in your dua, and that blessing will go back to you. Make dua for the prophets and messengers from Adam, alayhi salam, to our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then remember the companions and every single person who contributed an effort to this deen. So you became a Muslim. So you're reading the Quran. So you're reading the hadith of the Prophet Alaihi Salat Wasallam. So you know the akhlaq of your Prophet Alaihi Salat Wasallam. Make dua for them. That's part of your loyalty to them. And that's part of your belonging to that big family and being a branch of that tree We ask Allah to make us a good branch, not a dry branch, not to be broken branch. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahim. 
وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرشته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته وعافيته ولا عدوا للمسلمين إلا أهلكته ودمرته وصل يا ربي وسلم على حبيبك وحبيبنا سيدنا محمد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة